Hi, I want to talk to you about dependent and independent events. First of all, two events which are independent of each other, independent means that two things don't depend on each other to happen. Uh, for example, if I flip a coin and I roll a die, the outcome of the die does not depend on the outcome of the coin and vice versa. So this applies to a lot of things in life. Uh, even doing things like flipping a coin and then flipping a coin again. Uh, the first flip really has nothing to do with the second flip. It really has no influence on later coin flips. For example, let's say that you hit, say, you flip a coin five times and you get five heads in a row. And maybe you wanted to get tails. And you're thinking, surely the next flip, that next flip is going to be tails. Has to be tails. How can it not be tails? Because I got heads five times in a row. So you flip the coin, and as the coin flips, it doesn't care about the previous events. All it cares about is the probability of landing one way or another. And the probability of an event involving a coin is one over two. It's always one over two. Could you get a string of a hundred heads or a hundred tails? Who knows? But the 101st coin flip will always have a probability of 1 over 2. It won't matter what has happened in the past. Now, you know, a lot of people get these illusions about their lives. This is where, you know, you get these kind of crazy ideas. Gamblers, you know, they, they, they're on the slot machines. And, you know, maybe the chance of winning a slot machine is 1 in 100. And, you know, they put... And maybe it's a dollar per trial on the slot machine. And they tried 500 times. They lost 500 times. What's the probability that if he puts another loony in that slot machine, that it'll come out a jackpot? Well, it's still 1 over 100. It hasn't changed. But people get in their heads that, gee, surely on that, I've lost so many times that surely that next time I try that slot machine, it's going to come out my way. And, you know, it may not. There's no guarantees of anything in life. You know, especially something as remote as one in a hundred or one in a thousand. People buy lotto tickets and they have it in their heads that, um, you know, I've been buying these lotto tickets twice a week for ten years. Surely this next, this very next lotto ticket, or even book of lotto tickets, one of them's got to be a winner. I've, I've tried so many times, and all I've done is won little prizes and, you know, and that, but I want that big jackpot. Now, if anyone's ever tried Lotto 649, you probably, uh, you may have come into this discussion, right? Lotto 649 is a game where the balls fall out of the machine. There's 49 balls in a spinning globe, and, and the balls come out of the machine one at a time and six of them come out. Who knows which six? The, which six balls come out is completely random. Okay, so that if that's the case, the different kinds of lotto tickets you can have is 49 choose six for lotto 649. 49 choose six. That's a big number. That's like 13 million. Okay? And that means that your chance of winning that jackpot is 1 in 13 million. It's pretty remote. You would have better luck being struck by lightning or being hit by a meteor. I'm not kidding. You know, we have these illusions in our heads, but the thing is, the next lotto ticket you buy has the same probability as every other lotto ticket you bought. It's still 1 in 13 million. It's never going to change. So that's what we call an independent event. Previous lotto tickets have nothing to do with future lotto tickets. Previous events have nothing to do with future events. At least in terms of as long as these are independent events we're talking about. So, um, that leads us to our next discussion. What is a dependent event? When does, a de when does an event depend on another event? Most of you probably know how many cards there are in the deck. So, you probably think, okay, it's like 52 cards in a deck. We now have 52 cards in the deck, and that's the, these are the cards we're really concerned about. Okay, let's say I play out a card. 
you're hoping that all you know your desirable outcome will be an ace of spades. I don't know what's an ace of spades. Here's an ace of spades, right? That's your desirable outcome, ace of spades. But then you know I deal the card. I shuffle the deck. I deal the cards. Your first card is a six of clubs. So I dealt you one card. What is, what is the probability now of there being an ace of spades right on top of that deck on the next card? What's the probability of the next card being the ace of spades? Well, because it's shuffled, you don't know where that card is. I don't know where that card is. It could be the top card. The probability of it being the top card is the same as the probability of any other card being the top card. So it's one out of 52. Oh, oh, oh but I played this one already. So it's one out of 51. Ah. So when this six of clubs was part was on this deck, the probability of an ace of spades was one out of 52. But when I played the card, the probability changed. So that means that the probability of future cards depends on the card that's already been played. Because this is no longer in the deck. This is in my this is in my right hand. Okay? Deck's in the left hand. Well, okay, so now play another card. So I play what? That's an eight of diamonds. So I play an eight of diamonds. I have two cards in my hand now. That means that the number of cards in this deck is 52 minus 2, which is 50. The probability of the next card, being an ace of spades, has changed. It's now 1 over 50. It's getting slightly better every time I play a card. Okay, let's play another card. Three of hearts. Okay, so you can see here the probability changes and the probability depends on cards that have already been played. And I can keep going, you know, 49, 48, 47, 46, 1 out of 45, 1 out of 44, 1 out of 43. Oh, there you go. So we had to get to the point where the probability was 1 out of 43. Sometimes, you know, like uh, if you're playing a hockey game or something, the probability of shooting a goal on your opponent is really dependent on how close the puck already is to the opponent's net. The puck is already all the way back on the goalie's side of your own team, then the chances are pretty remote. But the closer you get to the opposing team, the closer you get to a goal. So this is another example of a dependent event as well. You probably recognize from your textbook um, that there are two very key equations regarding independent events and dependent events. Your main problem is trying to recognize an independent event when you see it. Ask yourself, does event A depend on event B or are they independent? Do they have nothing to do with each other? And sometimes it's kind of clear like flipping a coin and rolling a die because they have nothing to do with each other but sometimes not. There was a few uh, questions from the textbook, even the examples. The examples are even kind of interesting. This is question 6 on page 334 of section 6.4. Uh, the question asks, Shy Tenzin's friends assure him that if he asks Michaela out for a date, then there's a 0.85% chance that she will say yes. If there's a 60% chance, so basically the prob probability of Michaela saying yes is 0.85% or 0.85. It's 85%. If there's a chance, uh, sorry, if there's a 60% chance that Tenzin will summon the courage, 60% chance or 0.6 chance that Tenzin will summon the courage to ask Michaela out to the dance next week, what are the odds that they will be seen at the dance together? Notice you're not told whether this is a dependent or an independent event. You sort of have to sort of fumble with this. Well, okay, does Michaela saying yes depend on Tenzin asking her out? Well, I mean, you could also say, does Michaela saying no also depend on Tenzin asking her out? The, the answer is that, well, anyone asking Michaela out, <laughs> according to the question, 
is still 0.85 and it doesn't really depend on Tenzin. What about Tenzin asking anyone out? Well, it's always 0.6 because that's his, that's his courage summoning probability. So it appears as though these are independent events. That Michaela, on her own, will say point will say yes 0.85 of the time or 85% of the time and Tenzin will ask someone out 60% of the time given that that's what he wants to do okay so then the probability that that Tenzin will summon the courage and Michaela will say yes is equal to the product of the two these are independent events, so this is going to be P of T times P of M. So this is actually the um, product rule for, for independent events. Okay, so we're going to say 0 0.6 times 0 0.85, and this will be equal to, well, I already worked it out, 0 0.51. And so there's a 51% chance that they will be seen at the dance together. Dependent events, though, it's where you basically have two events that are connected. That basically the, the fact that one of those events happens has an influence on the other event happening. That's kind of what we're talking about. Um, so when they're dependent, we talk about conditional probability. It's like something will happen or have a chance of happening if something else happens. You might have read the um, example on page 331, example 4. A professional hockey team has eight wingers. Three of these wingers are 30 goal snorers or snipers. This is uh, page 331. Every, t every fall, the team plays an exhibition match with the club's farm team. So if you know what a farm team is, it's kind of like the Toronto Marlies uh, being a farm team for the Toronto Maple Leafs. It doesn't sound balanced, but maybe to make the game more interesting, the coach has agreed to select two wingers at random from the pro team to play for the farm team. So um, that means that, you know, that maybe the farm team has two, two people from the pro team that are at random. That kind of weakens the, weakens the pro team but strengthens the farm team. So what is the probability that two snipers will play for the farm team? The snipers, remember, are the sharpshooters, the ones that get their goal more often than not. We have three wingers or 30 goal scorers or snipers. So we have eight wingers. So the pro team has eight wingers and three are snipers. They're really sharp shooters. Okay, every, every fall the farm team plays an exhibition match with the club's farm team. In order to make the match more interesting for the fans, the coach has agreed to select two wingers at random from the pro team to play for the farm team. That's two wingers. Now, that's two out of eight wingers and three are snipers. So what's the probability that both are snipers? So that's kind of a, a cool question. Um, so you think about how these events happen. You select your first winger, then you select your next one. So here you select your first winger. So the probability that first is a sniper is equal to, well, there's three snipers out of eight wingers, so it's three over eight. 8 is kind of like your sample space, and 3 is like your desirable outcome. Now, I can't just say the probability that the second is a sniper because, well, you don't know what's happened because, actually, I could have picked a sniper, but then I might not have. I mean, I could have picked maybe one of the wingers. It's just a mediocre pro player from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Who cares? Okay, well... Because the question is asking what the probability of both being snipers are, 
we have to say we're only interested in the probability that the second is a sniper given that the first is a sniper. Right? Well, if the first was a sniper, then that means that we have two snipers remaining and we already picked a winger, so that's seven wingers remaining, two out of seven. And so the probability that both are snipers is equal to 3 over 8 times 2 over 7. And that's 3 times 2 is 6, 8 times 7 is 56. Now we need to simplify our fraction. Both, both are divisible by 2, so then 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 56 divided by 2 is 28. And there's your probability that both um, both hockey players are snipers. And if you look at uh, what I just did with the probability, if we call this event A and this event B, then this is A given, oh sorry, this is both are snipers, no, no. If this is event A, and this is still event A because they both have to do with the first being a sniper, this must be event B then the probability that both are snipers, that A and B occur, is the probability of A, because that was 3 over 8, times the probability of B given A, which was 2 over 7. So that verifies our formula that we started off with, about dependent events.